What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel then hi, my name is Nasser and I'm now a final year medical student studying at King's College London and it's that time of the year again. I'm sitting here making a video about what my life is like as a fifth year medical student. I've done this every single year for second, third, fourth and now fifth. If you're interested in seeing what life is like as a medical student across all of those years, I'll leave links to those videos somewhere over here on screen and in the description down below. All right, so let's talk about our clinical rotations. So we've got two eight week long blocks, long-term care and acute conditions. And then we have GP, career development program, elective and transition to F1. So last block on long-term conditions, we had a mix of different specialties that we rotated through and then included everything from um, resp, dermatology, room, orthopedics, care of the elderly and surgery. I'm reading them off of my screen because I just couldn't remember them all. So we spent one week in each of these specialties except for surgery where we had two. So Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday were expected to be in hospital pretty much from nine to five. Although I'll admit and be honest that most students including myself don't stay nine to five every single day. It depends on what's happening throughout the day, how much teaching we have, etc. We have a mixture of activities depending on the week but most of our time I'd say is spent on the wards, taking part in the ward rounds, taking notes, completing histories, doing jobs after the ward round like bloods, etc. And then we also have some scheduled teaching throughout the blocks, which at my current hospital right now, I'm not going to lie, is really not that great. It's been very infrequent and disorganized, but we'll take what we can. That's from the lecture side. And then once a week, we had bedside teaching with an F1 doctor or a junior doctor, which I found extremely helpful because this doctor would go and handpick specific patients that they thought would have good signs for us to listen to or examine and observe and patients that would be willing to talk to us and let them examine them. That doctor also explained things really well. I found those sessions incredibly helpful and that sort of small group teaching is something that I wish we had more of. Then once in a blue moon, we would have a clinical skill session where we were taught some sort of practical skill, for example, cannulation, catheterization, whatever. But honestly, I don't think we've had enough of these. I wish there was more time in the clinical skills lab and more bedside teaching. Whilst we're on these rotations, we have Wednesdays off. Wednesdays are supposed to be dedicated towards our global health project and our elective. Basically, the global health project culminates in a single, 1,500 word essay. And so since I'm probably going to write that essay in one sitting in one day, I don't really need to spend time working on it every single Wednesday throughout these blocks. So for myself and for a lot of other students, Wednesday is a day off from clinical placement and you can spend it however you want. I've spent most of that time working on things outside of medical schools, so for example, this YouTube channel, also doing my exercise, seeing friends, relaxing, so I can be energized and motivated and ready to go to clinical placement on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. These Wednesdays are also going to be incredibly useful, starting very soon when we need to prepare for our upcoming exams, which I'll talk about later on in the video. Then the rotation that I'm currently on right now is called acute care. It's very similar to what I just described before but we rotate through different specialties. Once again, I'm going to read these off screen. We're currently rotating through ambulatory care, the acute medical unit, surgery, gastroenterology, endocrinology, and cardiology. So I've already done gastroenterology and ambulatory care, and I'm now on cardio. Ambulatory care was easily my favorite because you actually get to Clark patients from beginning to end and then examine them and present that back to your senior or the consultant. And sort of going through this process of seeing a patient from as soon as they walk in until they get sent home is extremely valuable for me and useful for me because I get to see the whole process from start to finish. On top of that, I find that when I'm in ambulatory care or in a and &E, I'm much more involved and I can have a lot more responsibility with each patient. Whereas when I'm on the ward round and I'm following around the clinical team, I'm not making any decisions there. I'm mostly just listening, asking questions and trying to learn. Whereas in ambulatory care and a and &E, I'm physically doing the actual thing. So I'm getting in a lot more practice and improving my skills. So in fifth year, we get to do something pretty amazing, which is that we go to a GP or a general practice and you basically have the opportunity to sit in the position of the doctor and Clark patients, examine them and sort of do the entire GP consultation. I haven't done it yet, but I'm really excited because I think it'll be such a great opportunity to follow a patient from the very beginning when you're taking the history, then doing the examination, coming up with a management and treatment plan all by yourself. Of course, after you've done that, you'll be reporting everything that you've done to your seniors and you as a medical student won't be making any of the decisions regarding treatment and management. But being by yourself with the patient sort of requires requires you to be a lot more professional, a lot more knowledgeable, and to actually, you know, do everything very well. It sounds like a lot of responsibility. It sounds a little bit scary. I'm not going to lie. 
but it also seems like it's going to be quite fun and an incredible learning experience as well. I've heard great things from my friends who have already done this block and they say, you know, it's a time of great growth and learning. It's also something that I haven't done since my GP block back in second year, which I can't remember if it was one or two days a week, uh, you know, so this will be a lot more than that. It'll be a welcome change from being in the hospital. And yeah, I'm just really excited for it. Okay, so kind of during my GP placement in the next couple of months and then afterwards, we're going to be having some pretty big and important exams. First things first, we've got an upcoming progress test in mid-October. This is one of the usually three written exams that we have throughout the year. And usually the first two don't count towards anything and then the final one does count and is important. This year, the one that I have next month doesn't count for anything towards where I'm going to be as a doctor once I graduate. But it's a very good opportunity to get that practice in, you know, do do some extra studying, do some extra reading so that you are preparing yourself for finals, which actually do count. After that progress test, we have easily the most important single exam that I will ever write in medical school and honestly, probably in my life. It's called the situational judgment test. Now, this is a bit of a tricky one, so bear with me. Before we move on to the rest of the video, it's time for an ad from today's sponsor, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Their website builder makes it easy for someone like me with no knowledge of how to make a website to custom design one from scratch. What I like most about Squarespace is those customizable templates, each designed by a world-class design team to help you fit your own personal brand. Their websites are also optimized for mobile devices devices so that it looks great whether you're looking at it on your phone, your tablet or your laptop and you can even manage the entire website from an app on your phone. My friend and amazing photographer Aaron who takes a lot of my photos on Instagram has his portfolio on his website that he built using Squarespace. There's loads of other features like powerful email campaigns, built-in SEO and in-depth analytics tools. Whether you want to start writing a blog, sell things online or share your photography portfolio, do it with Squarespace. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and then when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash karma medic to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, let's get back to the video. The situational judgment test is not a medicine competency test. This is a test more based in ethics and situational understanding, which is meant to test our personality and sort of our ability to react appropriately to different situations as an F1 doctor. Now, the kicker is that this exam counts for 50% of the grade, which we will get at the end of medical school, which will decide where in the entire country of the United Kingdom we get get placed as foundation year doctors. So let me explain. All of the exams and assignments that I've written throughout my whole time at medical school count for 50%. And then this one exam called the situational judgment test counts for the other 50%. And together, they form that one grade. Now, the good news is that for this 50% over here, the one to do with all my academic grades throughout medical school, I've scored pretty much full marks. And so I've mitigated as much as I can of the risk of this one exam that counts for 50%. But since this is not a medicine competency test, it like literally anything can happen. And worse than that, this test is specifically designed to be a randomizer. And what I mean by that is that this test is supposed to equalize scores across the graduating doctors in the country. So if you've done very, very well academically, this test is supposed to help like bring you down back to average. And if you haven't done so well academically, then this test is an opportunity to bring your score up. Now, the reason for this is that if you could do very, very well academically and then score very, very well on this test, then you would go and apply for all the most highly sought after and the most competitive and popular positions for being a doctor in the United Kingdom. Now, obviously just getting good grades is not what makes you a good doctor and they're not correlated in a one-to-one -one ratio, but generally speaking, those doctors who would score higher academically would be concentrated in these areas around the country, which the NHS doesn't want. They want those doctors spread throughout the entire country to deliver an equal and high standard of care across the entire country. Each individual medical student gets ranked across every single other medical student in the entire country. And based on an algorithm and a series of preferences and rounds and things like that, we get chosen to go to different places around the country. So a very, very long story short, this situational judgment test exam is very, very important. After that exam in January of 2022, we have our medical school finals. This is gonna consist of one written exam and one OSCE exam. The good news is we just have to pass these exams to show the medical school that we have the competency to do them. And then finally, we have the PSA or the prescribing safety assessment, which is basically an exam just to check that we have the competency for prescribing as junior doctors. 
answers. If you fail this exam, then I think there's an opportunity to reset, but if you fail that, then you can't prescribe as a junior doctor, which would be honestly a big, big hassle because every time you needed to prescribe anything, you would have to ask somebody else. People have said that it's a fairly simple exam and most students pass on their first time. So, you know, touch wood, if we study well, if we do everything we need to do, we'll pass. As part of our final year in medical school, we get the opportunity to get extra training and extra time on placement in rotations or departments that we want. This is what's called the CDP and elective. Now, traditionally in medical school, students do their elective abroad in a different country, which honestly is just such an incredible opportunity to get to practice clinical medicine in a new healthcare system in a different country, maybe even in an impoverished country that could really use, you know, more clinical help. But unfortunately, we can't go abroad. So basically the medical school has made the decision that no students are gonna go abroad for their elective unless they have a really, really compelling reason to do so. For example, if you want to go abroad to your home country, Canada, where you want to practice clinical medicine in the future, me. So I reached out to the admin team and they actually gave me approval to apply for an elective abroad. And then I found out that Canada has canceled all their electives until 2023. <sighs> Honestly, like I can't describe just how gutted I was when I found that out. I have been looking forward to this for my entire time in medical school. I've been so excited to go abroad. I've been so excited to be in Canada, back to see all my friends in Toronto and get to practice medicine and be on elective. I was really looking forward to this. We can all still plan an elective within the UK, which is what I'm gonna do. And you know, I'm gonna make some plans. I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna have a good time but I feel like I've just missed out on this incredible, incredible opportunity that I could have had, but um, maybe one day in the future. Besides the elective, we also have the CDP or the Career Development Program, which I've already planned in pediatric surgery with two surgeons who I worked with when I was in my third year. We got to know each other quite well and I really like them. So I'm excited to go back to be spending more time with them. And then I'm thinking of doing my elective in emergency medicine and maybe obs and gynae. So these are two specialties that I kind of want to spend more time in as a sort of full-time medical student to see what life is actually like doing those two jobs and you know get as much experience as I possibly can. Obviously, when I do decide where I'm going, I will be talking about it and vlogging about it on this channel. So if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you do and stay tuned for that. Very soon, I think I'm gonna have very little free time. So September is kind of like my last chance to take things a bit easy, focus on myself outside of medical school and you know, take time to enjoy things that I want to do. I'm taking full advantage. I'm doing as much as I can. Motivation wise, to be completely honest and transparent with you guys, I think I'm struggling a bit. I think I've just been a student for too long. This is now my ninth year of university and I've kind of fallen into this routine of every year, you know, going to classes, doing my studying, doing the essays and assignments, doing these exams. And like, I'm just over it now. Like I need a big life change. I need to take that next step. I need something different. And I mean, to be honest, if a big life change is what I need, a big life change is what I'm gonna get very soon. And I am going to lose this identity of being a student. I'm going to lose the ability to sleep in one day or not go to placement because I'm feeling a bit under the weather. And you know, before I know it, I'm gonna be just in the hospital every day, like nine to five or nine to six or nine to seven or whatever. And I'm gonna be really, really busy. So I should also appreciate the time that I'm in now enjoy the moment and take full advantage of what I have. As far as extracurriculars go, you guys know me, I'm playing lots of sports, doing my running and going to the gym, making these YouTube videos every single week, still having a blast doing it, still really enjoying it. These are priorities of mine and so I'll always make time for them no matter what. As far as social life as well, things are going great. You know, I'm still finding time to hang out with my friends. I can still play video games. I can still chill with my sister, you know, everything is good. And all right, guys, I think that is it. That is what I wanted to tell you guys about my final year here in medical school. I'll be making more vlogs and taking you guys along the way through this journey with me as a final year medical student. So please do subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for those. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for being on this journey with me. Um, a lot of you have been watching since I was the end of my first year and early second year medical student. Um, and you know, obviously a lot has changed, a lot has happened in that time. And I just kind of wanted to say thank you. So if you're still watching till the end of this video, and if you've been with me for a while, my heart goes out to you. Thank you very much. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.